I love that when I open this, it says connect your charger for the best experience or something. Like, how the fuck do you do that? Like, my charger's on my laptop, but not... Like, how are you going to charge something that is on a literal mobile emulator? There's nothing wrong with doing it either. It's like, oh, it's on a... It's free anyway, so it's not like you're getting something that you wouldn't be able to normally do. In fact, this seems like the main way that people probably play it, or at least when I play against viewers and stuff, they don't seem to... Even if they are playing on their actual phone, I don't think it has any issue, like, work well, maybe it has an issue working with this because of blue stacks, but maybe it's just also the game itself, like how it's not really perfectly optimized or they have some internal issues with that anyway. But I've been buying some of these event cards a little bit flippantly. Now, I seem to recall this one. Maybe this was from last year, like when I first started playing, or maybe they've done it. Um, I feel like some of them have appeared on here multiple times since I, and this is actually a pretty good one too. Make another snake in the grass in the lane to the right. So you could put it in like the fourth lane or whatever and then have the next one come in the water, basically. Right, so... I keep getting tempted to get these ones that are... You know, th this is my main source of plants. I even just said, oh, I keep wasting them. Like I'm waiting for Bad Moon Rising, but then I want to get two of them at least. But that is a pretty cool one that I would like to add to my collection. The snake in the grass would make a fine addition to my collection. So let's see if there's anything new that I can get here, which normally there's not. Or, or wait, wait. Sometimes the clicking is a little bit off. Like it makes me click on stuff that I don't mean to do, which is why like I ac accidentally crafted something. But what I crafted, I didn't actually use or it was like a fifth copy of something anyway. It lets you make as, uh, up to five copies, which I don't get. Or maybe even more like... What could you possibly do with the fifth one besides, uh, whatever, just disenchant it? So I haven't actually bought a pack in a super long time, which people would probably say you should do, but... And now I'm not gonna have any daily quests, weekly quests, whatever, or... You have to always go here to get it to show them. Everything feels a little bit bugged out today, somehow. The fuck? King of the Grill. Okay, so what if I do it then? But you have to pay real money for it, which is always my pet peeve. Not even saying that's a pay-to-win thing, because you can probably get the same things from any other context, right? A except for the Kitchen Sink Bundle, people say that, or maybe they're just trolling me with it. That, oh, you can't get it. You can't get that card through crafting or event cards. You only have to get it through paying real money in that pack, but... Not like I care too much about it, so the assumption would be that, oh, I would... You know, you have a chance to get it again next week, right? Before, as soon as you log in. So even if I get it, I'll get it then, but... My whole philosophy here was I wanted to... I wanted to do it in such a way that... Um... I have a thousand, so I can get two Bad Moon Risings if I really want, but... You know, and I better after all this time waiting. I just don't think people realize how high impact of a card it is because there's nothing else in the game like it, which isn't that big of a surprise because, you know, oh, why wouldn't there be anything else like it? Because there's not that many cards in this game, period. So there's nothing else that is such a clear win condition de facto thing. And people would argue, oh, it's not even that good. Or, I mean, it is really good no matter what, but it's just too valuable for me. I don't know. Because I'm always going to have a good board and things like that. I think my stream might have actually froze. I can't tell. Why does it always crash in this game? Or no, it shows it correctly on here, but not on my thing. Hang on. <clears throat> oh, great. Now I have to watch an ad on my own stream to see if it's working. Yeah, this game is clearly too much for my computer to handle because I have to fucking have my stream crash repeatedly or whatever happened there where it basically just froze it could just be delayed i guess <clears throat> yeah you can't miss this high octane fucking legend level gameplay but that is what the truly great players would do they would make it harder for themselves by using all these kind of shitty decks i think it might just be delayed by a lot though which almost doesn't matter for most purposes aside from like chat interaction and stuff. Okay, we can use the little team up synergy for the mushroom thing. Right, so we get two of them for the price of one. That's always a good interaction to have. 
Not that it's really that great, but it should guarantee that you get one here. Okay, so we won the first game, even with all the technical difficulties, but uh, that one was kind of my fault, at least. Like, where it said... Uh, or the reason why it was, like, encoding overloaded or it couldn't handle this fucking mobile game of all things is actually because I forgot somehow to plug in my laptop. I had taken it out, uh, uncharged it to move it around or, like, change my setup, but then I forgot to put it back in. So apparently that makes that big of a difference with respect to the performance. Like, it's not going to be in best performance mode because it's not plugged in and charging or something. Which is very unusual. Like, it still shouldn't make that big of a difference, but... Especially when you're playing something as easy to run as this. That's my biggest complaint about this, or my biggest suggestion for it. It might have had a lot longer, better lifespan if it had just been released on PC. And I don't see what the problem with that is. It's a net positive. More people could have played it. It can be, obviously, cross-platform. There's no downside to putting it on PC. Yeah, hopefully that first game actually got recorded but maybe it didn't because it's one thing if it's just like completely crashes but it was somewhere in between where like you know it, it was still showing it but it was just sort of delayed and slow so that might seem like a waste but there's nothing else really to do that turn or rather it's a waste because you really should have just gone face with it yeah that's two weeks in a row that we've had bad luck with this series but last time wasn't my fault because it just genuinely crashed this time was actually because i should have just been plugged in or whatever this guy's been pretty good to me usually, the Poison Ivy. Could be misgendering a fictional plant. Poison Ivy's always supposed to be a, a female, but this somehow doesn't really give me a clear vibe either way. You see these one ones you can just ignore and let it farm on my block meter to actually turn, you know, let, let them hit my face just so I can get offensive cards from the block meter, actually. Not even to help me in any other way. It's like... It makes it seem like it's a bot all the time, I swear. The fact that... The fact that you're basically in a position to... You know, why wouldn't you just block the Poison Ivy with that, basically? What, is he gonna try to out-aggro me? So please don't trigger the block meter on that one, but it does. The, even there's an internal RNG element that makes it even worse. Like, where sometimes it'll give you one tick, sometimes it'll give you two. And for a while, at the beginning of the series, people kept debating what that actually meant. Like, oh, or they were trolling and trying to make it seem like something else. Where, oh, it's about this or it's about that. Like, uh, you know, it's, it's about how much damage you take or it's about how much whatever uh, other factors. But it actually just seems completely random how many bars each hit gives you. But no, it, it is like one of those bad participation trophy type of things where it feels like, oh, we're just giving you, we're helping you out for actually losing. And sure, both players get it, but it doesn't, it just doesn't really do much for me. Like, I'd rather it just not be there, but then it would change the whole dynamic of this game. I always like the animation for that one. Or like, I like the avatars, but the problem is you can't emote freely. I almost wish you could do that. And that would prove in a better way that some of these people aren't bots or whatever. I guess maybe his aggressive style is sort of paying off, but... The double strike wouldn't even help there, so he basically just shouldn't have an answer for this. And if, he just ignored the poison ivy the whole game. He just ghosted him. And... I guess it came back to bite him, because there's nothing he can do now. Maybe he even played that the right way, but I can't imagine that it was. He could have easily blocked that, or traded into it earlier not that i'm much one to talk because i'm just trying to go face the whole time anyway but yeah there's no way we'll complete that like just this time but we will have a thousand and maybe i'll consider getting that snake in the grass next time but maybe i shouldn't i don't know like i said i always want to have a thousand and i've been i keep criticizing myself at the beginning of every episode like oh last time i bought some i got some unnecessary sort of event card for 500 gems that I shouldn't have gotten because it's too expensive and you know I'm trying to save my gems but then I always fall for the next one like oh I want the Spirus even though it's a one cost and I always say it should be a high cost card that I get because I have so few of those or it should be a zombie card because they've been you know the plants have already gotten enough and they've sort of been spoiled but then I end up getting something 
I end up getting something that is neither of those things anyway, just because I like it or it's cool. Like, oh, this has a cool, fun interaction where you can click on the gravestones and actually do some interaction within the course of the game, because this game is very uninteractive in that way. Like, there's nothing you can do on the board. Like, you can't choose whether to attack or not or anything like that. Or, like, what lane to attack in, because everything that way is kind of scripted. You can do this, and then you can do this to save him. And then you will be in great position to just beat his face off with respect to aggro. Which is not really my preferred style of play, but it, su it suits you in two senses. Obviously, this hero is good for that, but also... But that's kind of why I chose the hero, because my collection is not so good and optimal, so it's much easier to play this way. Or even other characters who are not meant to play this way, it ends up devolving into that anyway. Like the Smash or somebody, or Green Shadow, you still have to play aggressively because... If you don't, if you don't, then you're going to lose anyway because your deck's not good enough to handle the mid-range or late game of other well-constructed decks. So you kind of have to just zerg it and go full aggro or bust because nothing else is going to work. It seems to be working now, but that was actually kind of a scary moment. Like maybe my computer isn't such a... In just the span of one day, it goes from being able to handle AAA modern games to, oh no, now it can't handle fucking... Uh, it can't handle PvZ heroes, but I guess that's just because it was not plugged in. Okay, we'll do that one because see the other guy's a high priority target already just for his effect, right? So now you're kind of splitting it. Now which one do I get rid of? You don't want to overcommit to just one thing. A very useful principle in this game actually because people often do that. Taking on little kids playing their phone under on their phone under their desk in school, that kind of game or it is like the most casual type of thing out there, which isn't necessarily bad. Like it has good production value, it has a good sense of style. The main thing it lacked was just actual active development for a long period of time. But the player base, I wouldn't even say the player base is there, but the, the passionate support base for it was there. And so there's definitely something to that. And it seems maybe more active than what it actually is because Obviously, you get to, uh, you know, you get queue time so quickly, which you don't get even in Hearthstone or Magic Arena and stuff. So it, that's what makes me skeptical and say that, oh, it's bots. But it could just be that it's it, it's only like one server, whereas those ones split. Like, oh, in, in Hearthstone, you're only playing against people from the U.S. or something. And there's more rank considerations and game mode considerations. Here, it's like all homogenous into one. The whole world is just one server let's say you're playing against people from china and everywhere so it's not region locked and then it's also not there's no other game modes there's only like one or two instead of splitting between several and then there's also there's also um like it's, it's not region locked it's not rank locked because they let you play against anybody of any rank you know, you're rank 5 and you're playing rank 40, like these crazy kind of matchups, it just doesn't care. And then it also doesn't restrict you to game modes, be, or there's not so many game modes to split the community. So that's almost a good way, not that those things were maybe ever even considered with this game, but that's a good way towards the end of a game's lifespan if you want to say, well, we're going to basically try to keep the game alive by doing that, like just don't have regions and don't have other things. So that it it expands the player base it makes you seem more active than what it actually is but in some way oh shit that would have won me the game obviously or i don't even need three i just need one but nothing i can do i have no choice but to do that but then again he still has to react to the eight three so how come they're playing like this where they're just he must have an answer for it, otherwise he just threw the game and he must be a bot. Okay, he did have an answer. But he still doesn't win, necessarily. Right, so we technically live to fight another day, but even this triple attack bonus now is not going to win me the game. Right, because... Aw, oh, shit. Not because of that, but I mean, what I had was so dinky and weak anyway. Okay, so Combustible Falls, but he's been doing pretty good lately, although I give him kind of too much of a special credit. Like, I always let him go first. So if it's a short episode like this one's certainly going to be, then we're not going to get too many chances to play as anybody else. So some of them keep getting cucked. We play as Combustible every single time, whereas like Solar Flare or 
uh, super brains and stuff like that get ignored because we keep prioritizing it in the same order. But I kind of like using him first because he's the he's the newest addition or the only addition that we've had. And then I like playing as a smash first for the zombies because we like we play until we lose. But then also when we lose as one, we switch to the other type. So if we lose the zombies, then we start to play as plants. Then if we lose the plants, we start to play as zombies. So we kind of switch that way. But also every time we lose as a hero, we have to switch to another hero period too. Per episode. So it's like a little permadeath mini gone. Like destroy one of their nuts or berries. Move a plant. Hard to say what they're going to do. So. <clears throat> That can be really strong, right? If you summon a nut plant, like uh, if you're playing Wall Knight, you can actually just destroy a, a whole turn worth of cost for no extra benefit. This is like one of those anti-meta whatever kind of cards where it could be way better value than what it seems. Especially in the later game, there'll be some eight cost nut or something crazy and you'll still be able to do that. If my understanding of how it works is right, which I think it is. Because it's not going to be like, destroy one of their tricks, because... Um... But you can do both of these anyway. You can do tricks to the extent that... Um... Well, how would you destroy it? Then you'd have to destroy it like out of their hand, basically. Move a plan. This is almost one of those instances where you'd rather decline it, but I guess this is better. You're still getting in more face damage. Or this one I arguably shouldn't play as aggro. But you still kind of should, and then if you, if it does get to the middle game, you do have some good options there. You know, the football guy, this guy, the two nurses, you have a second one of these two. You have some good mid-range value, but still it's not really control. Or again, Bad Moon Rising with this could be really good. It's almost better with like an aggro deck though, where you can just always guarantee that you're going to fill up the board. Right, so the board's always full with dinky 1-1s, one -ones, and then you turn it into something better. Whereas here you have a lot of good stuff anyway. That's a perfect value play for this. I hate to do it to you. That was like my first initial really good interaction with the game though, with Green Shadow, where I kept getting the three Peters and buffing them and that really helped me go on some of my better streaks early on. So now this is good just to stop their tricks from being effective. Kind of like a low that play, but not quite as good. Although I guess it is a permanent effect too. Like, it'll be ongoing, but I'd, I'd rather have one that's like, oh, they cost 10 more, but just this turn, right? But obviously, uh, Dragon Fruit is good for that, too, with respect to, you know, it's an ongoing effect, too. But he kind of costs too much. You need, like, a 4 cost that makes him cost, like, 10 more just the next turn, even if it's, like, a 1-1. One, one. <laughs> that would be my ideal card design. A two mana zero zero that makes their tricks cost five more next turn. With no other effect, so it's just Oh shit, the three Peter does save him. And it can get dangerous too if you let it stick around too long. Uh so this might be no, I don't know. Cause this one isn't going to matter, you know? But no, I mean, he shouldn't be able to get through even the football guy, but you would think I just have too much for him to deal with. So see, this was satisfying because we sort of match each other in the early game, even as I'm playing a bit more aggressively, but then you kind of take over with these higher cost things that you have later on. So this is like my mid-range dream that I always love playing in sort of a mid-range style in basically every card game, but this game is at least more conducive to it. You know what that skull thing reminds me of? is like one of those things from Wind Waker. There's like some sort of skull insignia that they have that you have in like trinkets and stuff Or even the PVZ art style in general is sometimes similar to that sort of the cartoonish vibe that everybody got so mad about with Wind Waker because You know, oh, this is like killing Zelda and this is like the wrong The wrong one, but it was cool at least to experiment with and then they went totally the opposite direction with You know they went the opposite direction with, with Twilight Princess, making it sort of more realistic, but yeah, ne whenever a company does something like that, ne it's never for good intentions. Like, oh, it's just artistically, we want to try this out. It must have been to get more juice out of the GameCube or something, right, to push it to its limit, that they could have done it better with that style than anything else. And like, the graphics aren't bad, but it's just more a preference of style that a lot of people didn't like or 
it was very different than what they were going for before, at least. But then they still retained it in other, in other games like Phantom Hourglass and stuff like that. But this is a good one. To start with, and sometimes I'll keep these higher cost ones because then you're kind of craving them later on and you just don't get them, right? That might seem absurd, like, oh, why would you keep a six cost or a seven cost? This thing was actually doing really good work for me. The, uh, the fact that you keep getting to conjure something better than the fucking lunchbox one. You get to conjure a, a pet and it can be really good. And you keep doing it over and over so you don't do it for the attempt of trying to trade. You're trying to just keep milking that effect over and over and basically getting infinite value, which is... That is kind of like a control mechanic if you can always guarantee that it happens. I think we used it once last time. We just got that one from some pack or whatever. From the monthly thing though, because like I said, I haven't gotten a pack manually in a really long time. Yeah, you can keep getting cycling value out of that. That would be the sort of thing that frustrates me. Didn't seem like we were in that good of a position there. But Nightcap can be a bit of a pushover garbage one that we never even see really. Yeah, it's, it's like we have our designated representative of each side. Captain Combustible represents the plants and the Smash represents the zombies. Just because I wouldn't even say Combustible is the best for the plants. Like probably Green Shadow still he has two Dark Matter Dragon Fruits and this and that. That make it seem better than what its performance has actually been. But if you look at it, see I'll keep the six cost because, you know, you're going to want something like that. And you might not have it when it gets there. But no, we, we just do combustible, like I said, because he's new. What's going on? Why is everybody conceding? Or I'm like, I end up farming the same people because they think my deck is too good or something, but it's really not that good. Or they are just like farming for some play X number of games, like regardless of outcome, but... Or he wants me to like win trade, like all... We keep queuing up and I keep throwing for him, he keeps throwing for me. I, I don't know. Person 143. Oh, you, you don't have me fooled with that one, though. I know it's a bot. More like bot 143. Yeah, that was weird that we got like three concessions in a row. It could be somehow the same people or whatever. They, they just know the Smash is a bad matchup for them. But they don't know it's me who's doing it. Whether because of how bad I am or whether because of how bad my, my collection still is, which I guess I can't say that too much now, but... It's been a long time coming with, uh, you know, whatever we do. See, this is an unfair matchup in and of itself, where you're getting to... Yeah, I think the bots are becoming more obvious now. I was always suspicious of it, but... Um, I don't know, like, like, whatever we've gotten, we've gotten from totally organically by not crafting it at all. Even even the event cards, I was questioning whether I should be able to do or not, but then it feels like we should because there'd be no other way that I could get them, right? I can't craft them, so how do you... And you can't get them in a pack, right? So how do you get an event card? You just wouldn't be able to get them, period, which that seems kind of dumb. And at least the commitment to get them is something that people always clown me for with respect to... You know, oh, why would you waste 500 gems on it? Just play the game all day, every day, and do those... farm out the tickets for it or something, but... Obviously, I don't play enough to do that, or I wouldn't really even want to do that. Okay, that seems like a crazy play, but it's really not that big, big of a deal, but... We will have to at least address what he's doing, because, like, here we do have to play at least a bit more defensively. This guy's coming along. He's <laughs> treating combustible exactly like I do, which I guess you might say everybody probably does that, but I'm sure there's other ways to still play these heroes just because... Oh, this is kind of a bad spot to be in, though. There's, there's like nothing I can do about either of those rows. I just have to tank it. Right, I just basically two the, threw those two things away. But yeah, at least he has probably a more optimally designed combustible deck than what I have. It's just a hodgepodge mix of stuff that I happen to have available, not like the best things overall. Yeah, that was a very crazy impactful play that he had there where, you know, he buffs this, he buffs these. It's just too much for the early time. This is one of the newer cards that we've gotten here. He won't actually die to this because 
Right, it'll hit for four, so you are blocking quite a bit. If only he had like frenzy or something too. Oh wow. Yeah, this guy's just basically a souped up version of what I'm doing, where it just has maybe a little more cohesion to it. Or maybe it just went really fortunately for him, but it uh oh now he gets frenzy. He's like, what would be the reason to hold that back? Oh, like save it for later, but there is no later. So we'd have to do something with this guy. And we just can't. Or you could have maybe whatever, you could have maybe done something, I don't know. Okay, so the smash goes down even after we get on a pretty good win streak with respect to whatever, winning a couple in a row just because people just concede right away. One of them immediately and then one of them in the early game, their mom's calling them, it's time to go to school or something. Or yeah, this is early enough, at least in the morning where actually it could be like as people are going off to school on a Friday. Or it's going to be like a long weekend where I live because I'm doxing myself. Yeah, super detective, internet detective, find out where I live based on this information. But like where there's a solar eclipse coming. I don't know how many places would get that here. Or they'll all, you'll get it, but like at different times. Yeah, like coming up on Monday or whatever, right? I would, uh, there, there'd be like a solar eclipse. So like a lot of schools and stuff are closed because of it. Okay, we'll just go ahead and do that because I'm a bit of a clown. <laughs> That's a bot play if I've ever seen one, but... You know, you should always save it as some sort of removal, but that, that would scare them and make them think like, Oh, I'm going to be super aggressive, even though I'm really not. Right, where this deck is at least a little more balanced and slow-paced, or it's so aggressive that you don't even have a play until turn three. So look what a clown show that is. But we're trying to at least cite them out, like, oh, they're going to try to play all slow, but the fact that we just whacked you for five that first turn is very... is probably very distressing to them. All right, so we just ignore what they're doing, and if they outvalue me, then so be it. But that means at least we should last long enough to see the Dark Matter Dragon Fruit come out, but then it might not because... You know, this goes at least against the stereotype of, oh, you're trying to keep those dinky 1-1s one around, one attack stuff around to keep farming up your block meter, but because they have Bullseye, now they won't even do that. But they st still also block them off, where now those two lanes are going to be useless to them for the rest of the game because they're not going to be able to team up or play stuff there. We can go ahead and do this one. Um... What? Wait, how did he even do that? Oh, just because he's ramped up a little bit. That's very concerning. That is one of my favorite cards. So clearly they have a bullseye fetish here. But I love this one because not only is it bullseye, but it also completely destroys their block meter too. So that's good on its own, right? You wouldn't even need to like, oh, you need like a bullseye build around it. You could just ignore that and say, um... Now we just hope for a buff, but we're not going to get anything from my block meter, unfortunately. Um, you, would, you wouldn't have to build a thing. You would just say... You know, go for the fact of trying to... Oh, shit. You know, the fact that it can just remove your block meter, period, is a good effect on its own right. You don't really need to worry about it otherwise. Okay, that's still fine, but I mean, I have to admit, this would be one that I would really enjoy, and obviously I can't really complain about, like, oh, I've gotten a lack of legendaries, it's just more like, well, that five damage to the middle would have clearly saved me now, except it really wouldn't have, because, whatever, like, it's just, Oh shit, now <laughs> I'll die to that. What? This is kind of a crazy effect, isn't it? 7 mana 6 6. Make another Gargantua in another lane. That's like a better version of the one that I have. That's like a 4 5 or something. And if someone's like a 1 1 Swabby or something in another lane when it takes damage, right? But not, not another Gargantua. Okay, that was a pretty disappointing showing. Maybe it's just unfair for him because he always ends up. 
he always ends up getting tougher matchups or something. Well, not always, but... You know, like the Smash went on a good streak, but like two of those were just resignations, and one of them was like a pushover. So, you know, you'll, you'll get matched against like a rank 40 now, just because... Whatever. The matchmaking can be kind of busted, which you can't really even complain about that because of the fact that... Oh my god. You can't complain about that because of the fact that, like I said, the queue times are at least decent where... In fact, they're very fast, so if these actually are real players, then you would just have to accept the fact that that's the trade-off you gotta make. The only two true aggro things that I should go for, or, or the heroes that really feel like that, are... I guess Solar Flare can be like that, but... Infinity and Combustible both feel like they should be more conducive to aggro that way. You're trying to get to rank 10 at least, or if we run out of heroes here. Yeah, this, this game is almost suited to the slow, casual sessions that I'm sort of doing with respect to, you know, out of all the card games I play, this is almost more fitting. Or at least a, I'm at like a different stage with Hearthstone, like where I'm in a later stage of it where I am just kind of messing around with old school gimmick decks. Like I'm not really trying to play competitively at all. So it almost takes on a bit of a casual form. And then the other side of it is like with Magic where I'm playing it sort of for the first time and I would be working towards that, but I'm still sort of playing it sort of laid back because I'm just trying to build up my collection and I'm not really worried about going for Mythic or anything yet. So... You know, in other words, Magic is at the early stage where I'm still trying to just play the game for the first time and, and just soak it in. Then Hearthstone is like I'm jaded to it and I've played it so much that I'm in like the overtime session where I'm not, I've been there, done that, and now I don't want to mess with that stuff anymore like the meta and, and trying to ladder. And then... And then with this, it's somewhere sort of in between... Well, not really in between, but it's like it's an in inherently casual game already. So I'm sort of embracing that by not crafting stuff, but then I am taking it seriously too at the same time. That, yeah, we might be trying to ladder or we might be trying to build our collection and stuff, but there's only so much I can do with it. And I love how this is like the Jesus goat interaction with respect to it's not actually amphibious, but it still becomes that on the. If you do it on something that is amphibious on the water, it just doesn't care, and it just does it anyway. So it might be worth it to bounce this, but... There's a little bit too much going on with this here. Deal 3 to a random plant. When revealed, make a 3-1. That also makes a 1-1. One, one. We should just summon something kind of weak there, and then do the bounce. Or I should have obviously done that in the other order. We should hopefully be able to trade in there, but who knows what kind of tricks Rose is going to have up her sleeve. One of the most annoying kind of characters. Or at least you see her a lot when she's in her element. Like, nobody will use her except people who have, like, really good decks that, you know, have the exact synergies that you need to make them worthwhile. That's at least okay, I guess, for now, but... You know, it's always like the best case scenario. So if I use Rose, I might not have the cards for her, and then it'll be stupid. Or I guess you can use Dark Matter Dragon Fruit with her. <coughs> Which is why I even debated getting her when I was going to get my first hero. It's not like I got it from a pack, right? I chose to get Combustible because I decided, oh, it suits with my whole... Uh, it suits with my whole style of basically being... Oh, I guess I did that in the wrong... Well, it doesn't matter. You're going to get screwed no matter what. I chose Combustible just because I thought the aggro style would suit me at this stage of my collection and everything. Or like how I'm playing a lot of these other characters anyway, but... <clears throat> this would actually save you in the sense that it will summon those two things, but... It's, uh... It's not really going to matter much. <clears throat> All I would need is, like, one hard removal thing, but Infinity doesn't really have that. Yeah, this is a relatively new card that is... I'm a fan of it for the Disco Ball, if nothing else, because of how much I like the Wall Knight thing. 
the disco nut or whatever it's called. Even though it's not a legendary, it'll always be a legendary to me because I just like it that much, I guess, but... Yeah, like, what am I really supposed to do with this? And why is he healing it for that much? Plus two, plus two when your plant or hero is healed, but why does he keep doing it that many times? I guess, oh, because it's healing everything, okay. All zombies get plus two. Which really wasn't that a big good of an interaction. <clears throat> okay, we're still actually fine if we can get this, uh, well, the strike through is going to kill me, but we can get rid of this 26 crazy thing at least. You might say, oh, you should prioritize the dinosaur thing instead because it's doing all this healing, but then at the same time, it's not going to matter because... You know, you would have had to prioritize that instead, so there's always something that's going to happen. Like, the strike through is the perfect complement to this, even if I can get rid of it. There's just nothing you can do. Oh, what is he hitting you with? He's hitting you with, like, that thing that you would... ...bang somebody's knees with and stuff, right? As a doctor, I never even noticed what that was before. Okay, so we certainly won't be able to complete the... Daily quest thing. Let's give, uh... Let's do all night so we can just completely cock Solar Flare. So I'll just go with him then until I lose, I guess. Or until I get to rank 10. I'm not going to do every single one here. This is fine. I do like his style of play, but it's not really suited still for what I'm... Uh, maybe I should have given up one of those. Um... It's still not quite good enough. Like, you're still going to have to win in the middle stage of the game. You're not going to be able to last it out, you know, into the true control level that you probably want to go for with respect to what this guy is all about. So, see, I should have mulliganed these for a two cost, but I wouldn't have expected to get cucked this hard. Or who knows, I would have mulliganed it and then gotten something else higher, right? Like, what are the chances I'm going to get just a two? This is at least a good thing for the team up. Astrocado is a legendary, but it's not really that good, or you have to support it maybe a little more. Like, yes, the pit can be okay. I'm not saying it's a bad card, but it's not really, like, above and beyond. Like, where they'll, they'll usually just get rid of the pit pretty easily. But I'm sure you could build something where you really keep guaranteeing its safety or buffing it or something. Okay, it's not a bad spot still. That kind of works out. Conjure and not. And Conjuration can be pretty good overall, but this thing is kind of getting out of control. Um, why don't we just do that? We'll block it for now. Otherwise, we're not taking too much from the other lanes. This is pretty sick, and it's probably the first time I've ever gotten it or maybe i have from some conjuration effect before but i love it when the best cards that i get in the course of a game are not actually my in my collection they're just ones from uh make a walnut in each ground lane who do you think you are i am move a plan against plus four okay fine so this thing is becoming a bit of a nuisance this fucking four or three but no, the best card you get is going to be some from some conjured effect, just because, whatever, either you get lucky with it, or you just don't have a choice, because, whatever, it, it's just more likely going to be better than what you have anyway. Okay, this is not the end of the world, but I am pretty low, and... You do have some defensive capabilities for now. It's just like that's going to be so late in the game that you're never even going to get the chance to play it. Which is often how the pace of a lot of these matchups go. But the problem is that this is a game, or, or what's weird about that is that this is a game where you're able to basically... Um, this is a game where you're basically able to get over 10 base mana, right? Where it keeps going past 10, which even Hearthstone doesn't do and other games don't do. 
where you get like one every turn, but it stops at 10. So here it goes over 10, but it seems weird because the games never last that long or even there's not that many high cost cards, period. And of the ones that there are, there are none that really are over 10. There's only like the, the bell thing. There's some bell that summons gargantuas in every lane. Which is like a worse version of Bad Moon Rising because it's too expensive and then it's like... It's just not like worth the trouble that goes into it. Zombie evolution destroy a plant, okay. I don't know what I should even be doing here. No reason to really do that yet unless he does something crazy which he only has three brains left to do it with. So if we get to the point where we can do this it would be pretty transformative but make a walnut in each ground lane. But it doesn't even consume the walnut, that's the thing. Like, this is actually a crazy card. But at least it's a very uniquely fun kind of effect. In fact, that might be the best AoE in the whole game, aside from maybe the Zomba dude who's like a fucking clown. Where he's like, uh... Whatever, just destroy all, all plants. And not even like all plants on the ground, right? Just all plants, period, which is almost too strong. And he's a 9-9 nine, nine for 9, like he's a good value, everything well statted. There's like no downside to it. Just the way that thing looks almost makes it seem like it should be... Like the way he shoves it makes it seem like that should be a strike through card. Just like he rolls it down the whole lane. The whole file if we want to use chest turns. Okay, now we're in a great spot. And we could do this, but now I'm gonna be greedy and save it somehow. Each ground lane. I almost don't need it, is the thing, but fuck it, I'll just do it. Just so I get the chance to have said that I play it, but it only destroyed Oh no, I was gonna say it was only gonna make one, but I forget about the whole team up element where it's even better for that. Right, where it'll be usable in way more situations than I think. Imagine if I still lose after that. But no, I, I love that Disco Ball. I like, obviously, Wall Knight style will play overall. I just think we're not there yet with the collection because you would need, like, a lot... You would need cards like that one that we exactly just saw that we don't actually have in our collection. Right, where you would be able to have some late game potential. Not that we needed it there, but... You know what I mean? Like, those are the kind of cards that'll complement the style that drags the game out, but it's like, it drags them out for what, right? You're going to get to the late game because you're so defensive minded, but then what are you going to do once you get there? You have to have some sort of payoff. In fact, I kind of want to look in the collection to see what are the high cost cards for him. There must be something even better than that, like where it's going to give you some crazy, almost like a win condition or something really well statted. But it hurts the hero, so you obviously got to do that anyway. Yeah, it's like I'm playing defensively and I'll get to turn 9, turn 10, but then I won't have anything to take advantage of it there. Yeah, it's all on Wall Knight. Wall Knight permanent. Try to get to rank 10. Otherwise, I have to delete my account, delete my whole channel, but obviously not. Just I'll end this particular episode. Because I never have enough time to like go with all of them. I almost want to wait and then do it with that next turn, but this is probably still worth it. You'll trade into both of them. You shouldn't be try to be too greedy. But the problem is if they do have some sort of long-term potential, they'll still beat me out. Which I think this guy maybe sometimes can have. The Michael Jackson role player, dude. I've become something of a Michael Jackson role player myself in the last couple weeks where I've been doing webcam streams to show like because I don't do face cam or whatever because of my whole philosophy on that. I think it's dumb and cult of personality basis and this and that. But I've been showing like a chessboard or like certain things, right? So I'm, but then I wear a glove on my hand to separate it from the self even more. Like, so it's even less about cult of personality. Because it doesn't matter like, oh, what you look like or anything like that. It's just all, this is kind of dumb actually because we're kind of letting that 4-1 roam free, but there's, it almost doesn't seem worth it somehow. Because it doesn't really have a good effect, but just that damage value is getting, getting to be a bit too much. So, I mean, I do have a heal, obviously, at my disposal, but this is getting a little bit tricky to deal with. But as long as we can get to the point where he burns out a little bit, my 
nuts can burn out the best of them, haha. Ha. So, they'll wear you out. My nuts will wear you out and burn you out and have you wishing for it to be over. Okay, so we can put these away at least, like... Put a couple things here. This will trade in. Actually, give me something that's actually going to have an attack value. Oh, shit. The endless loop interaction. Which we had that once with something that was crazy. It got, like... It gave me, like, three of the same thing in a row that it was, right? So it would have given me, like, one more, even. Invasive species. While in an environment, this gets plus three. Not really that big of a deal. Okay, so he's pretty much burned out of cards. Make a walnut. Okay. Oh, it doesn't say that it has to be on the ground, though. Right, so that's kind of a incorrect text interaction. It doesn't say make a walnut on the ground, does it? But it w wasn't letting me put it there. We should almost do the heal now. And you never want to do like one big play here. You want to just summon as many of these as you can. Just so you're safe from every angle, I guess. So we'll do this one here, we'll do that one there, we'll do this one there. And then I almost do you know what? I almost don't even want to do it because I want to wait till these things are damaged too. The Wall Knight sacrifices his own safety for the safety of his plants, for his nuts. Yeah, this is like the dream board. Now only if you could buff them, which I don't have too many cards in here that buff them. In fact, the only one I think is that... Uh, two, three that I actually forget the name of that I just played in the last one. I'm not very good at remembering names or what I often do in card games is I just come up with my own nicknames for them. That might be vastly different than what they actually are, but it just works for me. So the heal now would at least make sense, right? Because we just undo all the trouble that we went through. Unfortunately, we could be giving up the invasive species thing to do that, but that's still fine. The problem is we're not really trading into any of these because we don't have any attack value. The spine apple thing is like the most important card in the stack because it buffs, you know, everything. Or at least these things with no attack. You know, that, that's like a brilliant idea for a card, right? The, the name and the, the whatever. Just so, some of these ideas are actually quite cool how they come up with them. Wait, how didn't that get Frenzy if it did kill that, so I don't get what happened. Okay, now this is like his final stand, and so we can at least, you know, just survive it, and then we might have something to punish him with in the later on period. There's nothing that can actually go in the water. We'll do this maybe just for the healing capability too. But it doesn't heal your plants, it just heals you for your plants. Or I always give it too much credit. I always think it heals you one for each plant, but only for each flower. Which is kind of so specific that it's not really going to be that good. Like it'll heal you for two then, because of the stupid sunflower. If this even counts, which it should, even though it's made of stone. Or metal. Okay, we are pretty low on health though. We have so much mana now, and he's kind of burnt out of cards unless he gets something really good, like Bad Moon Rising or something. Which I don't even know if this guy can use it or not, but I think he can. Uh, we could do this one. Even though that trading statting doesn't work as well, right? This would have actually been better for that purpose. Or either of those would have been better. Team up. It's not a bad one, <laughs> stat-wise. But no, I, I just love the whole vibe that Wall Knight gives off, and it might be the sort of style of play that I would dislike in other games, but since this game's pace is a little bit faster and it's not quite as... or at least we haven't seen, like, the really annoying control long game stuff, then it still suits me a little better. Like, we still play him in a mid-range way, wh whereas now we have to do that... We have no choice but to do that, because that's all we have, but even later, that's still how I would choose to go about it. You see, we've outlasted him, and now we can do whatever we want. The problem is, there's nothing really that good that we can do. Or even this has that infinite cycling value, so we could do the team up. This should almost have team up on it. If it's truly a legendary caliber card, right? That should come with team up, but I get it. You have to support it at least that much. We don't have any actual amphibia stuff, but he is getting low, so... We should be fine, but this would be the whole beautiful synergy that we have. Where it's basically like... 
we could afford to do that too. We just wouldn't have the... Oh, this is a pretty awesome one too. Look at how these conjuration effects are so generous. I've gotten like two legendaries in a row. That nine cost bowling thing and then this thing. Yeah, this should be pretty much clean. But like I said, if, if the game did drag out and he's kind of in top deck mode, that's where this becomes really good because you can just keep doing it over and over and he might not be able to deal with it. Or even if he can, he has to waste his removal or whatever to get there. So that's one of those infinite value things that is just very good here. So you should be good no matter what. All plants use their health instead of that, which obviously works very well with this guy where most of your values are going to be inverse because your health is going to be higher on the nuts and the, def the defensive stuff that you have. That is a really good card actually that I haven't seen played as often as you might think. At the beginning of next episode, I could decide to basically see whether I want to buy the snake in the grass, which I kind of do, but I also want to have a thousand at all times. And I don't know when, if ever, we're going to see Bad Moon Rising actually come up. No, 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 see, that was really satisfying on a control level, whether you can really consider it control or not. But like, oh, you just last out whatever they're doing. You kind of rope-a-dope them, you just get them to completely burn out, and then you win. But it was sort of in an unconvincing fashion, because it's not like I truly had a great win condition, unless you consider the Astrocado Pit to be that, that you could truly, like, last forever with it. Like that one card, the Octo Zombie or whatever, that keeps coming back. That is something that I'm a big fan of, because that's one of those things, like, there's nothing you can really do about it, right? Unless you have, like, the Zucchini thing to like turn it into a chicken, basically silencing it. Anything else that kills it is going to simply still bring it back, even if you have to still play it for full cost. You know, there are certain matchups where that would be super satisfying, where, where no matter what they do, you can just keep doing it over and over and over again, and they just can't deal with it. The real way that people would say you would beat that is, oh, it's not that good because of, oh, well, you'll just like... You'll just beat them before, you know, like I play that for nine, but they got a whole bunch of shit on the board and they're just rushing me down, right? So in that sense, yes, but if it's more like a stale top deck sort of thing where you both last each other out, it's like Yasera or something like that, right? In early Hearthstone, like where not even that it would last out for too long, but you wait until they've used all their removal on everything else and then you play Yasera and it's like, oh shit, now I don't have any removal left for it. Whereas here, even if you do have removal for it, you're not going to be able to actually use it because every turn you could just keep playing it back. You're never going to have enough to get rid of it for good. And like I said, this game has no silence, so you can't actually, you know, do anything to get rid of it or to stop its effect from being relevant. So that's arguably one of my favorite cards in the game. Just even, I mean, I don't have it, but just in principle. But no, I've been very fortunate. Like, this no crafting challenge has sort of given me some fortuitous treatment just to the extent that... Fuck. Um... Because, like, I wanted to do this pineapple, although there's not that much to really do it on yet still. But yeah, you think we have enough removal in this deck, maybe? But it's just incidental that we happen to get <laughs> all of these together. But it works pretty well against the Smash because he might actually have some pretty big stuff to bring out. <clears throat> this is almost some Cthulhu creepy shit that you got the eyeballs looking at you the whole time. But that's all you have to do to make it feel like, oh, it's not just a... Like, the flower pot is actually a plant, too. It's not just a pot. Some, like, sort of weird rationalization that they would... I don't know how to explain it. Like... That everything is a plant. Even the stuff that contains the plant is itself a plant. Just put like an eyeball on it and you can call it a, you know, call it actually a living plant itself. So the one thing we've had an issue actually on him, it seems like we don't have any amphibious things. Uh, aside from maybe the water chestnut, like to actually deal with some of these. Like even in the last game, we couldn't deal with the threats in the water as much. But that might be one weakness of Wall Knight or it might just be a weakness of my Wall Knight collection kind of. Destroy a random zombie. 
I mean, these are both getting kind of out of control. But I guess I can delay this one a little bit or he'll still have frenzy, doesn't he? I don't know why I thought he did. But no, this, this is a very good value card if you can just, you know, kind of do it a little bit later when he can't deal with it or when you can guarantee like he summons one big thing and then I use it as a de facto removal for just that. And putting it like here, for example, would be a great option to have. So now, it very well might, if it's at the end of the turn, then it would do that one because that... Or no, no, we would trade in, but whatever. After the combat, right, is when it'll happen. So whatever you trade in, then you know whatever's left will be a problem. So this has gone kind of a similar way where we've outlasted them, but again, we don't have much of a recourse to punish them with where we outlast them, but then to do what, right? We need like our Ysera type play, which often we've gotten here just from conjuring stuff. Okay, that's fine. That's even fine. I'm trying to kind of save this for something better that he actually brings out. we we'll kind of slow pace him and be very disciplined. Got to play it like old school armor warrior. You know, you just keep holding your removal back, back, back as long as you can. And then finally, they'll completely be out. Or when they finally think they have something, then you, you use the removal that you saved all that time. I'm not even the biggest fan of control type decks, but that's one of my favorite party. I'm going to let you finish conceding to me, but armor warrior from early Hearthstone with Justicar is one of my favorite decks of all time in any card game, just because... It was just something so satisfying about it. Like, it's control, but it doesn't last that long. But you have, like, X number of removals and X number of plays to counter them. Like, I don't know how to explain it. Like, wow, what a hand. You would, they would know what you're going to do. Like, oh, he's going to have Ysera and he's going to have Thrasian or whatever he's going to have, right? And they have removal saved for them. But at some point, you just have too many things for them to deal with. And they just can't do it, so... You're kind of like squeezing the water from the stone. Squeezing the water from the nut, I guess, here. Which might have been used in some flavor text or something here as a joke, actually, on some card. I seem to almost remember it. But you can read the flavor text even in the middle of the game. That's what we should start doing. Works well with others, says so right there on his resume. Ah, oh, should I miss the flavor text on that one? I'll make you pay for this. So we should hold off playing this as long as we can so that we can get as many as much value but maybe i shouldn't either i don't know if that's good enough right you shouldn't get greedy and then he might have some answer for it later but whatever ideally you could have played it even with the chestnut thing too yeah the style of play of this is actually working and being quite satisfying just that you can last for so long here and see now, if he summons anything in this or this, you can always put this behind to trade in more effectively, which we might actually have to do. What is this? Overstuffed zombies heals to full and gets plus two when it destroys the plant. Average American, am I right? Eating fast food all day, fucking myself included. <laughs> Overstuffed zombie. The one joke that fell on deaf ears at the beginning, like a pool shark, but he's not even amphibious. Because, like, obviously, you know... That term is is very amphibious sounding, aquatic sounding. You're calling him both a shark and that he's in the pool, but that's not what it means. Obviously, a pool shark is somebody who like plays pool and fucking trolls people or scams people. Like a loan shark, how they say that. Um, okay, this would be a pretty good value for that. Don't really need to use the heal yet. That's one that I actually have myself, but I kind of forget about it because I don't, uh... A lot of these things that I have, I just don't get a chance to use them somehow. Whether I win or lose, it seems like the pace of the game is sometimes so fast that you don't get the chance. Destroy Gravestone. Now, that didn't cost him that much, so I won't even bother worrying about that. <clears throat> but, yeah, if, if, depending how much mana value that took up, you could just destroy it blindly, not even knowing what it is. Just thinking like, oh, he used six on it, so it's going to be completely whatever. This will be the last game either way, right? Because it'll get me to rank 10, or if I lose, like I said, if I lose with this guy, I will end off. 
yeah, th these last two sessions have started off pretty badly with it crashing. Or I guess it didn't do that at the beginning, but it did it somewhere last time. And then this one had some issue with the fucking encoding, just because I apparently wasn't charging my laptop. <laughs> like, that should really matter that much. I still don't really need to use the heal, but I need something more to either buff these or just something else to play. Yeah, this guy would be all about infinite value, and that's what the Astrocado thing can actually be pretty good for with respect to, you know, keep cycling it over and over. They copied Ashes of Alar with that, because that's kind of how, you know, the same sort of mechanic where it, the Phoenix becomes Ashes or like an egg when it dies, and then it keeps coming back if you don't kill it. But that, and there's a mechanic like that, I think, in, in Magic too, like every game. Might have some sort of similar thing like that. Wait, why did he appear like that? What? Why is his text and coloration all bugged out like that? Is that a bug? Or maybe there's some interaction that I'm just not aware of, but it's not like he was standing on the environment or something that that would even cause it, which it wouldn't. It's like I played it so fast, it just couldn't process the colors or something. We're actually in a pretty bad spot now because we just have nothing to deal with that. Or he'll make the ultimate mistake and he'll be like, oh, your zombies hide in gravestones and then that'll allow me to kill it. Whereas I otherwise wouldn't be able to. I love the way this one looks, actually. Right? I would waste 500 gems on it as an event card just for that reason alone. But when her deal one to each other plant zombie, when destroyed deal five to the plant hero. There's just really not much we can do here, man. I would probably just have to do this in order to survive because the frenzy would have fucked me over anyway. We kind of lasted a while here, but we didn't really have an answer because we would just need one simple single removal card for that or we'll end up killing ourselves with that with respect to damage. There's just really nothing I can do. The only thing I can hope for is a clutch moment where he hides his thing in his own gravestone for whatever stupid reason to like try to go for lethal and then we could destroy it, but then we still would lose because of this. Even if we could get rid of that too. Wow, I actually thought we were going to get to rank 10 too, but he just surprises me because we were doing pretty good at the beginning of this one. We had like an ideal opening hand and stuff, but then... We just couldn't get rid of that. Or see, they almost BM you. Just because, like, oh, you know, it must be a bot. Why wouldn't you just end it quicker? But you can never tell. But it's almost hard to BM somebody with a game where you auto-attack. It's almost like that's part of the reason why, too. Not just for the simplicity of an auto-battler design, but also for the simple fact that, you know, you can't BM somebody because you're forced to attack if you're able to. So if you have lethal, you're not going to miss it that way. I mean, you could hold back buffs and stuff, but I just mean like, you know, otherwise you could wait like 10 turns and just never attack and try to BM them like that. But I guess they could just resign if they wanted to stop that. But no, that's one thing that this game arguably prevents and cuts down on toxicity because it is so automatic or the fact that you can't even emote. 